Patrick Gunn, Calcast Specialist for Iowa State University and the Iowa Bee Center. Today we'll be discussing with you a portion of a program that we put on in the early winter months of 2014 titled Heifer Development 2, Maintaining Your Investment. Um, in this particular program we focused on management concepts for the first calf heifer that would ensure longevity within the herd. Um, for today's segment we're going to focus on the value of ester synchronization and artificial insemination, particularly in those first calf females. So why even synchronize estrus and utilize artificial insemination in the first place? And oftentimes when we talk about utilizing these management schemes, it's often in our yearling females, mostly because they're up close to the barn. We're often feeding them on a daily basis, working them on a more regular basis, and it's quite easy to implement estrus synchronization AI in these females. However, I think maybe the most potential benefit from these synchronization programs come in the first calf female. Um, particularly when we think about how many of these females are cycling during the breeding season, oftentimes due to added nutritional stressors such as needed nutrients for growth as well as that first lactation and maintenance requirements of that first calf female, a lower proportion of those individuals are cycling at the beginning of the breeding season. And with today's estrus synchronization protocols, we know with utilization of a cedar um, progesterone-based insert with these synchronization programs, we can often stimulate a a good proportion of those first calf heifers to start cycling earlier in the breeding season as long as they're about 30 days postpartum and as long as they're at least a body condition score four oftentimes we see a very good response in these females that may have not been previously cycling to actually start showing estrus cycles as a result of estrus synchronization and really as we get through this talk th today I hope that you'll see that's where the real benefit comes in in terms of our return on investment in these estrus synchronization strategies in terms of why we should even think about estrus synchronization and artificial insemination in the first place, um, we have another short segment on YouTube that really focuses on the overall benefits of estrus synchronization AI. I encourage you to go to the Iowa Beef Center webpage and check that out as well. Um, a lot of these overarching concepts don't change relative to heifers, mature cows, or first calf females, but I just want to hit on a few things I think are particularly important as it relates to the first calf female. Obviously, we often talk about estrus synchronization, how we utilize it to tighten up that breeding period, tighten up that subsequent calving season, which ultimately gives us a more uniform and a heavier calf crop to market at weaning, particularly with today's calf prices. Uh, this is significantly uh, important to the bottom line. Um, but I think when it comes to our first calf females, potentially one of the most significant benefits of estrus synchronization is allowing ourselves an extra opportunity to get that first calf female bred. Obviously we've got a lot of developmental costs tied up in this female and those that fall out of the herd during that first lactation or fail to conceive um, after they calve for the first time, those are the females that cause us to lose the most money on an individual basis. Um, if we think about a natural service breeding environment, um, if we have a fixed 60 day breeding season, on average we get about three opportunities for that female to conceive and that's if she's already cycling at the beginning of the breeding season. Again, oftentimes our first calf females, there's a significantly lower proportion of them that are actually cycling at the beginning of the breeding season and therefore utilizing something like estrus synchronization that can stimulate cyclicity in these females um, gives us a minimum of four opportunities oftentimes to get those females to conceive. And that's really, really important to make sure that we keep that first calf heifer around for an extended period of time. Even in today's marketplace, we still figure if your opportunity cost involved, somewhere between three and five calves minimum are needed for us to pay off um, for that female to actually turn a profit for us. Obviously with artificial insemination in particular, we can introduce new genetics into the herd. And in terms of as it relates to the first calf heifer, I really want to concentrate on calving distribution, what that really means in terms of dollars and cents. And in this particular slide here, you'll see calf A and calf B. Um, we're going to assume that they're of similar genetics. The only difference is that they're born 60 days apart during the subsequent calving season. Uh, both of them weighed 90 pounds at birth, had a two pound average daily gain, which we would assume um, most calves in the corn belt should be able to obtain. Um, a 60 day difference in age at weaning, resulting in 120 pounds difference weaning weight. Um, and even if we factor in the price weight slide uh, associated with these females or these calves, uh, lighter calves being worth a little bit more per pound, 
we still see about a hundred dollar advantage to those calves that are born earlier in the calving season um, and in this particular instance about a dollar seventy per day prior to this year this may have been as much as three three fifty a day but with the, the diminished cattle supplies in the United States right now um, those lighter weight calves are worth significantly more but it's still important to understand that those older calves are worth more um, every day that they're alive. To add a new wrinkle into this situation here I really want to focus on where the benefit of estrus synchronization comes in. I think it really comes in to this calf D right here and we'll show the dollars and cents associated with it here in a second but these are the same two calves, calves a, calf A and calf B from the previous slide in addition, we're going to look at the economics of calf C, who was born at the beginning of the calving season, but was born to an AI sire, and calf D, who even though his mother did not conceive to AI last year, um, did undergo estrus synchronization and was able to be moved up in the calving season. So let's assume that the mother of calf B and the mother of calf D calved at the end of the calving season last year. The mother of calf D underwent estrus synchronization and therefore were able to move her up during the breeding season get her bred earlier the mother of calf B did not undergo estrus synchronization and remained, and remained a trailer or late calver if you will this year so again calf C we're going to kind of utilize that as our baseline calf or the optimal benefits associated with estrus synchronization and AI and because that calf was an AI sired calf has a little bit of a benefit in terms of average daily gain during that pre-weaning period and in this particular instance based on today's prices that calf's worth about fourteen hundred and sixty dollars if we compare this to calf D that calf is going to be worth about ninety four dollars less than calf C just due to the fact that it's twenty one days younger but what I really want to focus on here is the fact that even though we didn't get his mother to conceived artificial insemination, the fact that we moved her up about 40 days in the ca subsequent calving season garnered us $68 over calf B. And I think that's really, really important when we consider the ultimate value of estrus synchronization AI. It's not necessarily the number of females that you get to conceive to artificial insemination, but it's the number of cows that you give the opportunity to breed or to conceive earlier in the calving season again giving us that more uniform calf crop more amount of a heavier amount of weaning weight to market after weaning I think that's where the real benefit comes in obviously um, we can induce estrus cycles in those anestrous cows and heifers and again I think that is the most potentially beneficial aspect of estrus synchronization in those first calf females and then ensure a yearly calving interval it's always good to keep in mind that to keep those females calving on a 365 day basis they only have about 80 days from the time that they calve to the time that they have to get rebred to maintain that yearly calving interval um, and estrus synchronization is one tool that we can utilize to help us keep that yearly calving interval and then one thing that we often talk about as well depending on the size of your herd you may, may be able to reduce the number of bulls required to cover those females um, particularly with today's bull markets averaging somewhere upwards of five six thousand dollars in many instances anytime we can reduce not only the upfront cost of that bull but also the yearly um, maintenance cost of that bull may prove very beneficial in the long run now in terms of which synchronization schemes are available there's a plethora of them out there ultimately um, my advice is use which one works best for your labor and uh, monetary environment um, there's a lot of different ways we can go all of them are effective but compliance is key so make sure that regardless of which synchronization program you settle on that you follow it to a T um, the different drugs that are available are constantly expanding I'm not going to focus on that uh, in any real detail today but it's safe to say that we feel that all these commercial products have their place in the market and are all equally effective I mean, it just comes down to which one works out best for you individually and again coming back to the whole compliance factor um, the estrus synchronization planner is available um, for a free download from the Iowa Beef Center and is put together in conjunction with the Beef Reproductive Task Force um, which could also be found at beefrepro.info again the estrus synchronization planner is just a very easy Excel based program that can be utilized to make sure that compliance is always maintained when it comes to these estrus synchronization programs
If you have any further questions, I encourage you to check out the IOB Center website at iobcenter.org. Thank you for your attention today.